Hello, students, and welcome to week seven. We're getting very close to the finish line. Again, thank you for your fine work so far. It's been a pleasure, and I'm just experiencing so many blessings from being with you, and uh, I look forward to that continuing clear to the end of our course. Thank you so very much. As we begin week seven, just a couple of administrative notes here. First of all, uh, all week five papers, that is paper two assignment from week five, are now graded with my VoiceThread video comments available for you. Hopefully you've seen them. Fine work overall. Uh, I've offered some feedback and some suggestions in some areas that not only apply to that current paper, but also our final paper, our capstone, that's coming at the end of week eight or during week eight. Be sure to watch those uh, to get my comments. Um, I, I want to commend the and affirm the great work you've done. Also provide some ways to uh, suggest some enhancements. Be sure to look in the grade book about that. Uh, and second, just a word about how final assignments uh, that are yet to be done need to be completed. A reminder that our course ends Saturday, October 15. Now that's a day early than our full seven day schedule. We usually have Monday to Sunday. In week eight, we only have Monday to Saturday. So in telegraphing where we will be two weeks from now uh, at the end of things, uh, I want to remind you that anything that's left over from week six uh, that needs to be submitted must be submitted by October 15. Anything left over from week seven must be submitted by October 15 because I'm not uh, going to be able to accept anything after the close of the course. Now, stay in touch with me about what might be extreme circumstances or exceptional cases, but uh, uh, our general rule is that nothing comes in after the course closes, which is the end of the day on Saturday, October 15. So anything left from week six, seven, and then of course the week that uh, we're finishing week eight, any course week, course, course work due then needs to be completed by October 15. Now, week seven, uh, communication and interpersonal relationships is our theme this coming week. As we explore the ninth command, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. That's the King James Version. We're going to be looking at a broader understanding of what it means to be truth tellers. That includes much more than just telling the truth under oath in a court of law where we have been called to testify, it certainly would apply to that. That's what it applied to for the nation of Israel, receiving that command. But as we read on into Exodus, Leviticus, and other places in the, the book of the law, the Torah, and then, of course, as we find expanded upon in the prophets in the Old Testament and most definitely in the New Testament, the Tenth Command has broader implications and applications. It involves all forms of truth-telling on the one hand that is a perfect duty combined with any disruptions or falsehoods that would include any misimpressions or wrong impressions or deception that we would leave. So that's going to be our theme this week, pretty important. So we're going to look at lying, we're going to look at deception, and we're going to look at a concept that comes from Augustine of Hippo in the one piece that we're going to read known as absolutism. And that's the concept that under no circumstances ever should we ever tell a falsehood or be a part of implying something that's other than true. And we're going to counterbalance that with some of our other reading this week. For example, uh, some work done by Christopher Tollefson on the work of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, that tremendous German philosopher and theologian in the 20th century, uh, a section called Lying and Christian Ethics, in which he is going to offer another perspective about the obligation that we would have, whether we would consider it a perfect duty or not, we're going to look at uh, but the obligation that we would have to not participate in any form of harm that would come to others by our telling of a truth or sharing full information. It's going to be a provocative, interesting paradox 
that we're looking at this week. I'm looking forward to our Wednesday discussion to flesh that out just a bit this coming week. So as you can see, those two things, Augustine online, Christopher Tullifson's work with Dietrich Bonhoeffer, lying in Christian ethics, and then one other, Wayne Grudem uh, in Christian ethics, chapter 12 of his book, lying and telling the truth. That's going to lead to our only assignment, our second and final group dialogue assignment. And you've got the prompt here in front of you. You're the lawyer for a wealthy, now recently deceased billionaire who has left his entire fortune to his dog. By lying, you're able to alter his will and thereby divert his estate to a more worthy cause, say feeding the hungry, caring for the homeless. You're very certain no one would find out because only you know the client's wishes. What should you do? Would a lawyer who misrepresents his deceased client's wishes be lying? Does the Ninth Commandment permit one to lie for a good cause? And in the dialogue work you're going to do, you're going to want to defend your answer with the Ninth Commandment in view. And while considering these earlier concepts from way back in week three, and we've carried them forward, justice, perfect duties, and imperfect duties. Those are all to be included. So I'm going to be looking for the terms, justice, perfect duties, and imperfect duties, as you accurately and um, uh, practically apply them in this, in this assignment prompt. So answer those questions uh, from your readings and even previous stuff that we've done. Remember, 250 to 350 words in your original post, and the response post to one classmate must have at least 100 to 125 words. Here's some details about how you can be successful in that. You can read that as your lead, at your leisure. It's also in week seven course content associated with the assignment uh, prompt. Uh, I would say to you, be sure to zero in on justice, perfect and imperfect duties, natural, moral law, integrate those into your post, both your original work and your responses or your replies. Let me underscore, be sure, being sure to do so in your original post. Don't miss the obligation or requirement here to address these in your original work. Sometimes I have to come back and kind of remind that that was a part of the original work and come back and be sure it's included in replies. Be sure you hit it in the original work. I'm going to be ringing in at the end of the week and creating my own post as well. And you'll be hearing from me just like you did back in week three. I don't anticipate um, uh, posting many questions to you. I am going to be asking you to read my post and reply to it. Uh, and then, of course, we have our Wednesday session, as I've said, to dig a little deeper into this. So that's week seven, winding up our course, uh, just two full weeks left. And uh, I'm excited for the outcomes here for everybody. I'm praying for you daily, and I'm nearby if needed.